Team Group Dark Z Alpha is a high-performance DDR4 memory that features an armored aluminum heatsink design, comes with an overclocking profile, and is compatible with AMD's latest Ryzen processors. To learn more, check out the link in the video description. A few weeks ago, I made a poll asking you guys whether you'd be interested in an i3-3240 review, and even though most of you wanted me to compare it to the FX6300 right away, I still decided to make a quick review of this processor. I am almost done testing the FX6300. There are a couple of benchmarks left and I just can't wait to upload the comparison, which should go live soon after this video gets uploaded. Anyways, for those of you who don't know, the Core i3-3240 is a dual-core CPU with hyper-threading that released back in September of 2012 and was priced at just under $150. With a clock speed of 3.4 GHz, it is one of the highest clocked i3s that you could get back in the day, and in today's video we're going to have a look at how well it has aged. For the system specs, we have an MSI Z77A G43 motherboard, 16GB of DDR3 1866MHz memory, an overclocked GTX 970 graphics card, and a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. All the games were tested using lowest settings at a resolution of 1600 by 900 to reduce the GP bottleneck, and even though that isn't going to be an issue in this situation, lowering the settings still makes more sense when using a low-end CPU like this. Alright, so let's quickly go through a couple of benchmarks, after which we'll move on to gaming results. Starting off, we have Cinebench R15, where we're getting 121 points for the single core and 303 points for the multi-core. For reference, my Ryzen 5 1600AF, which is basically a 2600, is obviously faster when it comes to both single and multi-core tests by 26 and 295% respectively, which shows how far we have come over the past 8 years. In V-Ray, we see the Core i3-3240 delivering a score of 1710 points, and finally, looking at Intel Burn Test, the i3 processor is able to finish it in 280 seconds. Moving on to gaming, let's begin with an older title. For the first game, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and to my surprise, the i3 is able to run the game without any issues whatsoever. Stepping things up, we have Far Cry 5, and once again, I'm quite impressed. Sure, we're not getting a perfectly stable experience, and frames are pretty much below 60s most of the time, but it's not bad enough to make the game unplayable. Next is The Division 2, which is one of the newest titles we have on this list, and here we can see the i3 starting to struggle. Now, I'd like to point out that the footage we're looking at here has a lot of dropped frames, which by the way is something we're going to see in other titles as well, so keep in mind that things don't look as choppy while playing the game. That is, not to say the gameplay experience is great though, the frame time is very inconsistent and major stutters do happen from time to time, making the game not so playable. Next up we have Apex Legends, and while we're mostly above 60 frames, it doesn't really feel like it. Now, in simple areas, it isn't much of an issue and the game is playable, though once you start moving towards a more intensive location or when you get into a big fight, you will quickly realize that a CPU upgrade is necessary. In case you came this far, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching my videos, and if you enjoyed them, I'd really appreciate if you could just simply leave a like. You can also support this channel by using Amazon affiliate links provided in the description, which also helps a ton. 
Moving on to PUBG, things get even worse. Again, at first, it may seem like you're getting enough frames for the game to be playable, though things don't look as good when looking at the frame time graph. Also pay attention that this is the kind of performance we're getting by simply running in an open field, meaning that if we start driving around or move to a more intensive area, things will get much worse. Despite all that, I still had a pretty good match with a decent amount of kills, though I really wanted to poke my eyes out by the end of the game. Next, we have Battlefield 5, which is yet another game where the i3 struggles. Thankfully, the frame time isn't as bad as it was while playing PUBG, and this time I was able to get away with a slight headache. For our final game we have Call of Duty Warzone, which performs like a combination of both Battlefield and PUBG. Basically, not only we're below 50 frames most of the time, the frame time is also horrible, making the game barely playable. To my surprise, I was still able to land some decent shots here and there, though it doesn't justify the poor performance that we're getting. When it comes to temperatures as well as power consumption, it shouldn't be a surprise that this CPU doesn't consume much power, nor does it run hot. Alright, so that's going to be it for this quick review. The results are clear and there is not much to say here. Two cores and four threads are just simply not cutting it nowadays unless all you do is watch YouTube and play non-intensive games of course. Stay tuned for the upcoming comparison of the FX6300 and the i3-3240, which is going to be very in-depth. I even decided to go ahead and buy the stock coolers that these CPUs came with back in the day and compare them as well. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out more of my videos over here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.